What is up YouTube? My name is James and I'm bringing you guys a brand new video here today. And today I'm going to be showing you guys everything you need to know about how to use and apply presets on your photos. So let's just say you bought a preset pack just maybe a couple minutes ago and you apply it to some of your photos, something's off, something's missing, and it's just not working. Now the problem you're having may not be with the presets, but it could be with what you may not be doing. So my philosophy with presets is that they are unfinished products. Now what I mean by this is that presets are supposed to give you a base model edit. So what that means is presets give you like this base model, they give you an outline, they give you an idea, a direction, a basic style of how you should edit your photo and then you go in and tweak it to how you like it on your actual photo. So for example, let's say you're using a preset for a snow photo, a snow photo in an urban setting. It may or may not be the preset pack that I just released for snow photos in urban settings. Maybe, maybe it isn't, maybe you didn't even hear about it yet because I just released it and it's in the description below for only $15 for five presets. Um, but maybe you didn't, maybe you have. What you need to do is apply the preset and then after the preset is applied you have this base model. You have probably your exposure settings, your tone curve, maybe a couple color adjustments affected and that's it. Now what you have to do is you have to go in and edit the temperature, you have to go edit the uh, maybe the split toning, some more colors, maybe you have to adjust the exposure a little bit, maybe you have to decrease some of the shadows, but what the reason why you do that is because every photo is different, every photo has different lighting, every photo has different colors, every photo has different scenery and different changes in lighting in different places. Like say the back of the photo is lit but the front of the photo is more dark, it means vice versa, maybe the preset was made for a photo that was not like yours but it could still be used for your photo, you just have to adjust it a little bit. That's what I mean when presets are base models. For my presets, I only include the exposure settings, the maybe maybe the clarity, violence, and saturation if it's an integral part of the photo. I include the tone curve adjustments. I include maybe color adjustments in the HSL. Maybe, maybe. It depends if it's an integral part of the photo or not. Some colors adjustments are more integral parts of the photo. So let's say I have just a pre I have a preset where just the blues are edited, not any other colors. You can still go in and change other colors, but just know that the blues are an important part of it. And again, it's still not to say you can't change the blues if you want to. Also, the split toning. The split toning may or may not be affected because the split toning may or may not be an integral part of the photo. If it is, then maybe you'll see a watered down version of the split toning. So if you want to increase it a little bit if it works with your photo. You want to change the color a little bit if it works to make it work with your photo. It all depends on your photo. And then when it comes to the vignetting and the dehazing and stuff like that and camera calibration, all of it depends on whether it's an important part of the photo or not. And that's for you to decide at your own uh, transgression if you want to change it or not, or you want to keep it the way it is, or you want to maybe lessen it or heighten it. Whatever it is, it's up to you because presets are not finished products. They are base model edits and you want to make sure you adjust your photos so that you get the most out of your presets. So what I'll be showing you in about a minute in Lightroom is how exactly you're going to be applying your presets and then an example of an actual edit of me going into a photo, applying a preset that doesn't really work with it too much and then making it look awesome with only minor adjustments nothing crazy just minor adjustments in each of the areas of your photo so let's get straight into this let's hop into Lightroom right now okay so here we are in Lightroom and let's really quickly go through these raw files and then look at the final versions of them with their correct preset applied so firstly here we have the uh, Manhattan Bridge view in Dumbo iconic as always gotta have it in there and and you can't even tell that it's snowing but it is and the preset will show the snow essentially it's gonna bring out the snow so the next photo here is this taxi in Chinatown the next is the flat iron the next is uh, a guy 
with his bike taxi in Times Square, and lastly, the one uh, it's on the Manhattan Bridge overlooking the FDR Highway in Manhattan. And now these are the photos all edited with their correct preset applied. This is the one in Dumbo. This is the uh, taxi, the flat iron, the other taxi, I guess, it's a bike taxi uh, in Times Square, and then the FDR Highway. So each of these have their own presets. This is actually um, all the presets in my preset pack. Um, these are all these are all five presets. These are all the uh, original photos that they were based off of. So now we're going to go back into the raw files and apply the actual presets to the corresponding photos. And I'm going to show you that even with even with the preset that I made for that specific photo, it's still not going to look exactly like this because, again, the presets are base model edits and don't actually are actually final edited images. So let's go to our develop module. Here is all five presets right here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Dumbo goes with Dumbo right here. And as you can see, it looks awesome. The, the, the regular base model presets awesome. It doesn't affect temperature. It doesn't affect any of the HSL except for some blues right here. And it has a little bit of split toning. Now the reason why this photo doesn't look like the app, the one I just showed you, just by a little bit, some things are some, just some things are different, is because those parts that I edited aren't in the preset because sometimes those things just don't work with other photos. Those are specific things that you edit to a specific photo. Now those things were one of those things were a brush that I used, and the other things were um, some vignetting and uh, dehazing. I did a little bit more dehazing. And a little bit more vignetting. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna add that little bit more vignetting right here, and just a little bit more of dehazing, and that's gonna bring more detail right here in this bridge area. Uh, and now what I'm gonna show you is the main thing I did, which is a brush. So all I did was take this brush right here, just and brushed on these two buildings up here. And what that's gonna do is really make it look like it's snowing now. Ready? Shadows all the way up just like that around right there and bam now this photo pops this photo really pops now you can see that it's snowing outside and it's awesome you can really really see that and that snow on the building and it looks really beautiful so that's an example of some really minor tweaks that you might have to apply now I'm gonna show you one with major tweaks so most of the time you're gonna end up having to do major tweaks in a photo because the presets again they're base models and some photos just aren't going to work with it and you're going to have to mess with, it, mess with it a lot but you're still getting that really that style and that look that the preset has regardless of what the tweaks that you make so we're going to go to this photo of the FDR we're going to go to our develop module and we're going to apply not the FDR not the FDR preset but we're going to apply the Times Square preset we actually going to reset that real quick and then apply the Times Square preset so just like that as you can see, it looks cool, but what is what is this mess up here? That that's not good. We do not want that. And also, there's really these dark corners right here. Way too much vignetting. Way too much vignetting. So what we're gonna do here is because I already see notice there's too much vignetting. We're gonna bring our vignetting back down to zero. Um, we already have enabled profile corrections, which is good. And so now we're going to start from scratch and go through our adjustments and see what we need to do. Now already with vignetting at zero, it looks like a good photo. But that's not what we want to do. We still have all these little black dots up here that we want to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to up the highlights a little bit. And we're going to keep going until we see what we like. Now I think that's pretty good. You get this nice little foggy haze up here. It gets rid of a lot of the dots. Now what we can also do is up the whites. The whites is going to be really, really crazy. Ready for this? Look how much of a difference that makes when you decrease it all the way to when you increase it all the way. That's insane. Now it's not too pronounced, but this whole photo is comprised of a shit ton of white dots. As you can see here, look at how many white dots there are. You can't see it out here too much. But when you really zoom in, it's a shit ton of white dots. And now when you up those whites, all those white dots are being made a ton brighter. And that's why snow photos are so whites based. Whites are the most important things in snow photos, in my opinion. So now, what the what the whites originally were were right here. 
we're gonna bring it up to around like 71 and now bam now the sky is really really bright the snow really looks pronounced it's emphasized and it looks really really cool now another thing that you can do is you can go to your split toning and you can add some more blue highlights just like this and now you really get that like sense of like this shit's a f like, this is a tundra this is like a crazy blizzard the blizzard of the century like this looks crazy like it's freezing outside it's so cold those blue highlights are really gonna emphasize the cold that's outside there's no other really other colors in this photo maybe you want to Maybe because maybe you see these yellow lines here, you want up the saturation of the yellows and the oranges. And really get that yellow line emphasized. And I think that looks really, really good, actually. I'm going to keep that. And so now, what you can also do is you can add the temperature as well. That's something I would do first, but I, know, I knew from the start that I really didn't want to mess with it too much. Um, if you want to make it more blue, you can do that. That still looks pretty awesome, honestly. Or if you make it want to make it more yellow, you can do that as well. Um, that doesn't look terrible maybe you want to just dumb it down a little bit maybe like there but still honestly not a fan I like it where it was before we're gonna bring it back to what it was originally 4800 and so essentially that's what you want to do with this photo that's what makes this photo look awesome and uh, those are the major tweaks that, that I would consider those major tweaks now uh, sometimes you even have to go farther and edit the, the shadows the blacks the clarity maybe even the tone curve um, depending on the photo what you could even do in this photo if you want to is you can even make a graduated filter right here and up the exposure just like that and now you really get that uh, really much more white in the sky just like that let's actually bring it like right here now you really get that more emphasized whites in the sky and so that's a really good example of what of this photo and how you would edit it with a different preset that doesn't go with it. Okay, so that's essentially what I wanted to show you guys this video. Is I wanted to show you what kind of tweaks you may have to make for a certain photo to work with a certain preset. So that wasn't completely all of it. You may need to change different things like the exposure itself, the tone curve, maybe. Um, Maybe you have to adjust the temperature. Maybe you want to adjust the temperature to make the colors look different. It's, I don't know, it's all up to you and it's all up to your own discretion of what you want to do with your photo. I think this is really important. I think this is a very important video for you to make and to share because I want to be able to share this with all the people that are possibly interested in buying my presets. I think that it's super important to know this when you are buying presets because you are using money to buy these things that will help you edit your photos but then when you don't know how to actually use them and apply them it can be kind of really really demotivating and like you just get frustrated and it's like why did I just waste my money on this when there is a way that you can make it work and this is the way so anyway if you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to like comment and subscribe if you are interested in buying this preset pack with all the snow photos the link is in the description below to my self eye page it's $15 for all five presets. It's my first preset pack. I just released it. And if you are interested in buying more, keep your eye out on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be making a lot more editing tutorials and making a lot more preset packs to go with all those editing tutorials. Anyway, guys, that's been it. I will see you guys in the next video.